Hey, what's up, everybody? We are at Together in the Trades in Waco, Texas. A familiar face, Rich, is back. Different shirt this time around. <laughs> yeah, I got the, got the V here. For, 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 yeah, right. and so uh, this is a great event. We want to thank today's show sponsors, Gulf Coast Bookkeeping. If you guys are looking for bookkeepers, Megan and Joey down in Pensacola, Florida, would love to uh, give you a free 15-minute consultation to see if you are a good fit. We appreciate them sponsoring today's show. We appreciate Vermeer sponsoring this event. This is the first time you guys, uh, you know, took a gamble, if you will, because it's the first time ever doing this event. I think it's a huge success. We said last night before it even started, it was already a huge success. Absolutely. We had a great meetup last night. So thanks for uh, linking arms with the community. And I know you've done a lot with Brian and Liz and, and Caleb and Brittany before, but I appreciate you investing in this community. Uh, it really means a lot. So yeah, a lot's changed in your world, huh, Rich? It, it sure has, yeah. I've... Uh, Got the same job, but just a different company. I went to uh, Vermeer about six weeks ago, and cool. um, I fell in love with the uh, with the company culture first and the people. And then, you know, I, I already already knew they had a great product because I used it with my own company when I had my own tree care company. So yeah, you've been in the industry for a while, huh? I have. I have. Take I, us back to the your start in the green industry. Uh, man, my start my the, the start of my green industry career really started in high school. Uh, starting doing tree care, okay, and uh, gave me a passion for really tree pruning and removal. And, uh, and then in college, I did... Uh, what state uh, was that in? So I grew up in, outside of Chicago, in okay. a town called West Chicago. And okay. um, I uh, worked for my neighbor, who, uh, the crazy thing about my neighbor, he was also my guidance counselor, he was also my best friend's dad, mm -hmm. and then uh, he was also my dad's friend across the street. So, And then also, uh, he was also my wrestling coach, so I couldn't get away with anything. So, And he was my employer during the summer doing tree care. So I, I started doing tree care that way, and then uh, from there, uh, just uh, wanted to stay in uh, lawn care, tree care, landscaping. Well, still, so <laughs> yeah. So tell us about the the move to uh, Vermeer and why you uh, chose to uh, you know join their um, good culture and company. Yeah. Well, um, I uh, I was working for another uh, manufacturer out of Kansas City, and uh, they're a great 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 group of people, uh, great manufacturer, and um, I uh, wasn't really looking, uh, but I had been friends with um, with some people, uh, Austin and, and some other guys uh, mm -hmm. up at Vermeer, and they were looking for an, a national account position, a key account position, and so uh, I, I, at first I was like, I'm not really interested, because uh, mm -hmm. I was happy doing what I was doing, and I loved the people that I was working with and working for, and, um, and they came to me and said, well, would you think about it? And I was like, all right, I'll listen. So I listened, uh, went up to uh, Vermeer Corporate Headquarters in Pella, Iowa, mm -hmm. and uh, talked to Austin and talked to Matt and, and everybody else and really got a sense of not just the company but the people. Mm. And um, and I was like, wow, you know, I under I get the product was, was the best. They make the best stump grinder, the best – uh, chippers on the market. They make, you know, amazing skid loaders and all that stuff. And I was already familiar with all that. And I, once I got there and I met the people and I met the, the people behind the business and the family that owns Vermeer, the Andrigas, I was like blown away. And I'm like, wow, that's what made the difference. It was, had, had nothing to do with money, um, but it was the people. And then also I learned about their, their dealer network, which is totally different than, than any other dealer network in the in the business and uh, how they're wholly integrated with with the factory tell and us a little bit more about that sure um i think trevor touched touched on this a little bit is that you know when gary w first started out he kind of for lack of a better word sent out and he asked uh people that were working in the factory if they were interested in in going to I illinois or going to california or going to the east coast mm -hmm. and starting a a, a dealership network you know he had these products and uh, they said yes and so these entrepreneurs went out and from Pella <laughs> mm -hmm. and a lot of them and and started their own their own dealer network mm -hmm. and that was 72 years ago the dealers didn't start 72 years ago but you know when they started the dealer network that's how they built it from the ground up so these people and these owners and these principals that started all these dealership groups um, so like Midwest and in, in, in Illinois and, and Indiana and then all roads in uh, along, along the eastern seaboard, those guys, they really, they came from the factory and they came out and started a business. And it was really amazing. Um, and so they took that work ethic, that Midwest work ethic, that Midwest faith, and, and took a step and, 
and there they are. Now they're huge. So awesome. Well, we're going to kick it over to Mr. Producer. He's back in the ATL and hear from today's show sponsors. And uh, coming up more, we'll uh, continue our conversation with Rich here at the Together in the Trades event in Waco, Texas. We'll be right back. All right, guys, we are back in Waco, Texas. We Rich are. has yeah. been in the green industry, whether you're pruning a tree, cutting it down, grinding it up, and yep. uh, you've been around this industry for a long time. Yep. There was something about culture. Yep. It wasn't the product, which was good. It wasn't yep. the money, which mm -hmm. hopefully they're taking care of you. But it was it's, the culture yep. that, that was like a magnet. They said, I want to I want to team up with uh, Vermeer. And so I think we'll keep it as kind as possible, but we've seen a lot of negative cultures in this industry sure, absolutely. on every end of the spectrum, whether absolutely. you're providing the service or you're buying the product. I mean, I, we're not here to negatively expose, you know, companies, but it's common no, never. in the green industry. It's like $98.7 billion industry. I was reading one of those magazines the other yep. day. It's huge. Yeah, it is. One of the biggest commercial based businesses, you know, from stump grinders, the lawnmowers, the weed eaters to the guys providing the service, a huge industry. It is. Majority of cultures are not good. You found one that is good. So what what, what was it like? How did you tell? Because I think most people are fake on the on the paper. Everyone's got a good culture. Yep. yep. The, the the employee handbook, everything's right. Yep. But you can smell it, sniff it, sense it. That's fake. For no, this is authentic. I me and yep. Andrew aren't dumb. We could tell you guys are genuine. Yeah. You know yep. what I mean. And so how did you pick up on that after seeing so much from? being around for a while sure absolutely uh, th th there's just where, where do i start is is uh, my first thought and and the reason why i say that is because first off you know it starts at the top you know the culture starts at the top the andrew is they're a family of faith and they're they're a family that really cares about their employees and then they put their money where their mouth is i mean you can talk all day long you know but what are they doing to help you know the working on a line on a factory line taking care of you know making sure that that a product is put together and put together with quality and pride in order to keep that person i don't want to say motivated but but loving their job mm -hmm. is they're feeling appreciated and they're they're really not just feeling appreciated because you tell them they're doing a good job but you you share in in the profit yeah. you make sure that they can afford medication you know we we're talking about there's a there's a um a pharmacy on on campus and that pharmacy does not make any money on purpose. It's, it's, th they set it up so that if your kid needs, you know, whatever it is, they can go there and it's $2 over cost. It's not whatever it is. I don't know if I'm supposed to be saying that or not, but, you know, it's just things like that that really, you know, there's four chaplains that they employ full time. So if you or your family or, or your kids need, need just somebody to talk to, you can do that. And, and these people are there full time. You know, what, what employ, what company really uh, i was thinking to myself what company employs four chaplains full-time you know they're not adding to the bottom line but they are you know and uh, just multiple things like that um that really make and then that really extends through our dealership network too that you know our dealers then even though they're wholly owned by uh, individual people or groups that they carry that on to their employees right mm -hmm. because they go, wow, you know, not only do the Vermeer corporate, but, you know, the Vermeer All Roads and Vermeer Midwest, and Vermeer RDO, whatever yeah. it is, they are really, they really take care of their employees as well. And and that that's kind of, it's not kind of required, it is required that, yeah. that we live by the golden rule. We treat people the way we want to be treated. And it, you have 36 or 3,500 people to do that. And I think Andrew and I were talking the other day, it, it starts with the one. Yep. Like you have to take care of the one and treat them the way you want to be treated. And then it just multiplies into 3,500. Because most guys listening to the show, they might have one, two, three crews, you know. And it seems like just managing six or seven people is, like, tough. Yeah. You yeah. know, I can't imagine 3,500, 3,600 people. So You know, I think when you, when you give something to, you know, you get what you give. And I don't care whether you have three employees or 3,000 employees. If you're giving, if you're investing into your employees, if you're loving them and really loving them, I mean, really yeah. um, really taking care of, loving them and, and taking care of them, then you're going to be successful because they're going to want to do more. They're going to want to work more. They're going to want to invest more in their lives mm -hmm. as well as, you know, you bringing their family, you know, 
bringing their families into your family, i.e. business. Yeah. I'm really curious because you've, you've been on the product side of the business. The, the folks that come to Launchpreneur Academy <laughs> together in the trades, we run businesses. We're, yeah. we're the ones buying your equipment and out there sweating and cutting down the trees, but, sure. you know, using the stump grinder, cutting that grass, making that cash, doing the work. And uh, what's been your uh, sense of seeing the community and the social media? And, and how have you kind of been taking all that in over the years as you've been on the fringes of watching all this from your, you know, not on the service side of it, but on the product side of it? That's a good question. So I've been on the on the product side now for, you know, going on a little over four years and uh, became with being friends with Brian, you know, three years ago, I guess now. And uh, I know. Lake, shout out to B and B and Kansas City, and yeah, go B&B Kansas City, care. yeah, that's right, and uh, and some other guys, and uh, it's just understanding that, you know, people get, um, th- they get that any product has to have, you know, productivity and it has to make it more profitable, and makes you want to, you know, be as efficient as you can be with whatever we're talking about equipment. And, you know, what I tell people is the proof is in the pudding. So mm-hmm. you got to you got to look at the, you know, at the, you know, the Vermeer and you got to look at the other three brands of 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 mini skids and say, OK, what's the best for my business, which is going to make me the the the, be, the best investment. And sometimes it's not a, ma- a matter of speed. It's a matter of what's your cost of ownership. Uh, how long does it take to service it? It's there's so many aspects to that that. Uh, that I've learned being on the manufacturing end and being on the uh, the product end, that what I tell people is, is you I don't expect anybody to ever buy a pro- piece a product that's not the best for their business, mm. and I don't care what brand it is, but you need to really just invest in every one of those aspects. How, you know, um, what's, what how fast can I profit and produce from whatever product I'm buying? Yeah. How how do you calculate that? Because these machines, I mean, you guys have what, 26, how many products? 226 yeah. products. Yeah. So I know it ranges in oh, yeah. price, but what would you say to somebody in the spring money's good? Like yep. the bank accounts are getting fat. The money's yep. flowing in yep. and it's like, oh, I can buy that. I can buy that. And yep. sometimes we don't calculate the ROI. How do we know when we should rent something versus going out and making the big investment? And should we do it? in cash should we do it with payments like what what have you kind of found to to run that op, that efficiency and the profitability of the business yeah so that's um that's a very very good question so first off is how how big are you and how much revenue do you have coming in versus how much revenue do you want to come in and expected to come in as well as well as what's your what's your margin so um there's there's definitely you can get into the nitty gritty about what percentage of your uh what percentage of your, of your margin are you going to invest in uh, whatever product it is? So um, if you have, if you're starting out, you know, you definitely want to rent more than you buy. You don't want to get over leveraged. One of the biggest things that I've learned in my uh, owning my own business is not being over leveraged, but I was, I was not, I should say I was not over leveraged, but I, I wanted to make sure that, you know, I can pay all my bills first and then also pay my bills for my equipment. So you want to look at that, and and a lot of your um, like LMN have a good software like LMN where you can uh, look at your actual profitability and say yes, I actually can afford that piece of equipment or can't. So it's kind of I know that's a non-answer answer, but um, oh that's good because uh, guys don't want to hear that rent if you can't afford it rent first. Guys don't want to hear that, but I think it's important if the mo- if the numbers don't line up. Yep. Work hard and rent, and then eventually buy. Exactly, exactly. So it's all about looking at your numbers. You know, like I said, when you're when you're first starting out, rent. There's there's nothing wrong with rent. You don't have to. You're not responsible for maintenance. You're not responsible for owning. If it breaks down, you can maybe get a credit on your on your rental. <laughs> you know, um, whatever the case may be. Uh, when you start getting bigger, and you're like, all right, I need an expense to uh, to to take against my my income so that the government doesn't take so much in taxes, then, then you need to do that. Um, also, um, what I tell people is an accountant isn't just an accountant. You need to make sure you have a good accountant, to, and the accountant's purpose is not just to make you more money, but also to keep you out of jail. So, Awesome. <laughs> That's so good. Well, thanks again uh, to Vermeer for um, really We're glad to be here. Yeah, for partnering with uh, the Fullertons, the Almonds, and the industry yeah. in, in this event. And uh, I already heard him say, uh, together in the trades, 20, 
22 in Nashville. Absolutely. And uh, maybe, you know, Andrew and I would love to come up to Iowa and, and check yeah. check out your place. I've been up to uh, Tor Toro invited us up, and I drove through Iowa. Yep. It was like cornfields, and <laughs> eventually I got to West Des Moines. That's where yep. I stayed. Yep. And then uh, Ken, so it started with a K. I went and saw Corey Ballard. K Ken, can he? No. Um, it was a little. It was a little bit more north of uh, West Des Moines. It started well, with a K. We're gonna have to have you come up then, because we're right. We're right by Corey, so we're about yeah. uh, 50 miles from. Okay. where Corey's at so yeah so anyway we'd love to you know see firsthand your um you know what you guys got going on and absolutely uh, appreciate what you do for our community we, we absolutely absolutely and come on uh, see your local dealer you know one great thing about again about the Vermeer dealership groups is when you go in they're part of the factory and they're, and they're part of the pride too where you know they're going to know your name they want to take care of you and those guys are amazing so um, and they are about helping you guys be more profit and producing and profitable in your business. So cool. Well, thank you for your time. It sounds like lunch is ready. Awesome. So we're gonna go eat, and then you guys have your uh, big presentation after lunch. So let's do it. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Talk to you.